up, folks? It's the second episode of Sports Hotline, the podcast with Ernest Robinson. We need you to like, comment, and share the show. It's on X at erob 87 Ernest. It's on Facebook by the name of the program, Sports Hotline, the podcast with Ernest Robinson. And it's on YouTube at Sports Hotline, the podcast 87. Now, the idea behind the show is to shine light on stories and people that you don't typically see in your local media. First, I want to congratulate somebody you do see in media everywhere, and that's South Carolina State Bulldog head football coach Buddy Pugh, who announced his retirement this week at the Orangeburg Touchdown Club. Now, in keeping with the show, we were down in Orangeburg before Coach Pugh made that announcement for press day with the Bulldogs. They were all clean and spiffy and shined up for pictures, and if Coach Pugh was retiring, he didn't give us any clues on this day. Now, true to what the show is about, the first person we'll meet in this week's episode is someone who you would not normally talk about unless he made a mistake. And I'm talking about South Carolina State long snapper, Caleb Brown. All right, I'm talking with South Carolina State long snapper, Caleb Brown. And Caleb, a lot of times, folks on special teams go unnoticed until something goes wrong. How important has your job been, and how important uh, is your job on this football team? Uh, uh, my job is very important. Uh, as a long snapper, you know, you only get one snap, or it can be high snap, low snap, and it could cost the game. It could be a really um, hard time to come back from a bad snap. So it's just hard to, you know, keep that pressure on me, and I got to stay focused all the time. Uh, as for the kickers, it's not just me. Kickers get at one kick if they – Miss, miss the kick, we're down by three, which is hard coming back by three. So it's just, you know, that pressure is a, a lot of confidence booster for us because we know that we can make the kick, make the snap, but we're going to push forward, you know. How did you get into long snapping? Did you do this in high school, and did they recruit you as a long snapper? So, so actually, as a long snapper, when I was in middle school, like my coach, uh, first time I ever played football was in eighth grade, and he was just like, hey, throw this ball real quick with me. He did the little two hands. I threw the ball. It was a perfect spiral. He was like, hey, you're our long snapper. And so ever since then, I've been just looking up videos and doing this by myself. And then now we have a coach, a real position coach, a long snapper. He coached in the league, Coach Collins. So it's just a true blessing. Like, I finally get somebody to actually teach me the ways of, you know, how to actually long snap. You know, when you think about long snappers, Caleb, you have to stay in the game even when you sit on the sidelines for a long time because, like you said, when they call on you, it's a crucial snap. Yeah. How do you stay focused during the course of a football game? Uh, just uh, having a mindset of knowing that I, I know that I'm going to make the snap and I know that I'm going to, you know, put it where it is. Um, you know, like I said earlier, it's all about confidence. You know, a, a lot of – People don't have that confidence, you know, and you just got to keep that confidence. Every snap, every play, every rep, you know, do do it the best of your ability. That's how I would believe, you know, just keep pushing. So when you start talking about saying extra point or a field goal, it starts with you, it's the holder, and then it's the kicker. How important is that relationship with you and the holder? Because there have been times in your career where all of a sudden you're in a ball game and you got a new holder. Yes, uh, I think – Throughout my career, I had about four or five holders here, just just being here. And, it's, you know, I just try to get them aside during practice, try to talk to them, and, you know, always have a connection with them. Even if it's like sitting down at the calf with them, you know, talking about, you know, like where you want my snaps to be, where, like, how you feel comfortable, you know, just always trying to feel like they're comfortable and I'm comfortable, and so the uh, Gavin can make the field goal every time, you know? You know, when you start talking about long snap and that sort of thing, I know you guys have a closeness. How difficult is it to take a guy who is probably a backup quarterback or receiver uh, to buy into how you guys work individually? Because they're used to working in groups, yes. catching passes, running routes. Yes. You guys really have to work on your game pretty much by yourself yeah it's uh it's re very hard especially like during practices when you know you got the got a good star uh receiver and uh j2 he's gonna be uh the main holder this year so it's just um you know hard because yeah i want him to get his reps and i'ma just you know keep working with my uh, punter and just keeping the snaps where j2 will want them and we just gonna have to keep working outside of practice maybe before practice and you know keep working at it you know 
how often do you get carried away? You make a good snap. A lot of times people don't realize yeah. you're the first person downfield. Yes. Uh, it, it's just like it's like bread and butter, you know, like once you get that good snub, you, you, you just feel it. It's just like you ready to run down the field, make it make a play, uh, give the opportunity for my other players, to, uh, my other teammates to make the play. And, you know, just it's just fun, you know. Well, Caleb, look, man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate what you do. Yes. And uh, I appreciate the time I've spent with you in the past. And we've been on the road. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. All appreciate right. it. All right. All right, I'm talking with South Carolina State quarterback Corey Fields. Corey, um, you opted to come back this year. Talk about your decision to come back and play another year of college football. I would say for me, it was just the fact that when I came, I broke my finger last year. It was a disappointing feeling for me. I had time to realize the ups and downs that I had last year and just the moments I can get better at. So, And I wanted to finish my master's. I'm on three classes away, so I want to get that done as well. So when you're coming into this season, Corey, uh, how much did you feel it's an advantage for you with your experience and a young football team? Because a lot of guys you play with have already moved on. Uh, I would say the advantage is just being a more vocal part of the office, talking to the players and the coaches, telling them how I feel and what the players feel so we all can be on the same page and be comfortable with the offense so we can play at a faster pace. You talk about that. You've got some um, last year. Of course, Richard Bailey went out, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of times fans don't understand how important Richard Bailey was at his ball club because uh, it's hard to replace his experience. Talk about having Richard back and the group that you're working with this year. Uh, for me, having Richard back, that's that's like my eighth grade buddy right there. He went years, years together. So having him back is like a good feeling. I know at the end of the day, he's gonna be, he always going to find his way open. He always going to catch it. And just having the, the other receivers, like, they've been making plays all summer, all camp. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Uh, talk about the selection of receivers you got this year and some guys that, you know, we mentioned Richard, but there's some other guys who you're going to count on as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Smith-Brown, we got Jordan Smith. Najee's going to show up too. He's a freshman. Uh, you got Richie, you got Rakim. I don't know, the list can go on and on and now on. From, talk to me about that offensive line. You got some experienced guys coming back. These guys have been to some wars with you as well. Oh, the old line I love them boys, man. Every day, laugh and joke all day, <laughs> joke around with them. Uh, it's good having them back because at the end of the day, I know I can talk to them how I feel and they'll understand it's not coming from, oh, yeah, I don't like what y'all doing. It's just the fact of standing on business is what we got to do. Now, you know, you mentioned the finger. That's mm -hmm. the final question. Tell me about the finger and, and how you feel. Uh, I feel fine with it now. I mean, it was kind of struggling at first, but overall, it's good to go now. Well, look, welcome back. Glad to have you back and uh, good luck on the 26. Thank you. All right. All right, we're talking with South Carolina State head football coach Buddy Pugh. And, Coach, as I mentioned to you earlier, I know you could not wait to get the season started. You got you got that right. Anytime you have a situation like we had last year, it's it's always exciting to get, a ch get another chance. And we sure do think that we've got a lot better t opportunity. This team returns a lot of players from last year. And I'm excited about Coach Thomas Howard, our defense coordinator, who gives us a little different look. We had, I think we're a little sounder. You know, I don't you know, I thought we were really good in the past, but at the same time we were giving up a good many big plays. I'm thinking that we're gonna be a lot better football team that way defensively this year. So I look forward to us getting out and see if we can stop the run. And then on offense, we got a little different look over there too. You're talking about Coach Howard talking about running the football or stopping the run. Coach, he says a lot of times you come into three and eight situations, you don't have any guys. One of the things that we do have, you have some guys, especially when you start off up front with Patrick Godbold and Tank Minner and, of course, uh, Jablonski Green. You do. You do. You got some some good, solid returning veterans on that, that defensive front. And, you know, that's where, it's, that's where it starts. You know, that, that counts the most of all. If you can, if you can put the, the, the beef up front, then you know you got a chance to have an ch opportunity to stop the run. And then the, behind them, uh, we think we made a nice uh, replacement because we lost B.J. Davis, and we didn't really anticipate that. But when that happened, then we went out and got Aiden Weber, the uh, transfer from Delaware State, who beat us up last year down here from Delaware State's angle. So we got a situation now where, you know, we feel that we are as good personnel-wise, and now we're going to try to see if we can change our look a little bit to see if we can become a little less aggressive and a little sounder. I think we get a chance to be, you know, a little, you know, a, a little more forgiving. 
when you start talking about being forgiving coach in the secondary, you got you don't have many guys coming back that started a lot, mm-hmm. maybe, but Jamari and Benjamin. But you've got a lot of guys who've contributed mm-hmm. a lot in the past, so they're not mm-hmm. going to be inexperienced. Mm-hmm. They just didn't get a lot of playing time in the past. You, you're right. We do have a good number group of, 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 of secondary guys that are coming along. But the big guy that I think makes a big difference for us is getting Jalen Evans back. And, you know, Jalen got uh, – uh, got hurt right at the beginning of the season last year and didn't play at all and had surgery. And he was actually granted a seventh year, so he's an old guy, you know, as far as experience is concerned. And then you go out and and uh, and, and get a, a, a transfer. We got a, a grad transfer in Malcolm uh, McGee from Alcorn that I, that's really done a nice job of not only being a, a good player but a a, a good leader, and uh, you know he's exciting. You know, in a way that that kind of solidifies us there. We got Doe back, so down the middle of our defense in the secondary, we st- we we really about as strong as we've been. You know, in a few years now, outside is where we almost all look, all knew. You know, we lost some guys out there. And, we got Jamar Benjamin back. If we can keep Jamar on the field and healthy, then we've got a chance to be really good. Uh, the Brunson kid over St. Matthews, you know, has been a good player for us, you know, kind of on and off. So he finally gets his shot to get in there and run around a little bit and do it that way. Jalen Evans, uh, you know, seems to be the, 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 the heir apparent to the corner position. He's a big body, you know, and he's, he's had, he's had an injury problem or two during the spring, but hopefully he can get, full speed by the time we get to Jackson. And at the same time, you know, I think that secondary then comes together in a way that it gives us a chance to be very similar to last year, maybe a little bit better. Before we talk to the offense, let's talk about the special teams. Unfortunately, you'll be out without the services of uh, Dylan uh, for a while. But talk about uh, the new coach that you brought in, a kicking coach. Uh-huh. Talk about uh, the addition to that coach and what his duties are going to be in working with Coach Bird and the special teams. Yes, we brought Chris Collins in. Chris is a, is a kicking guru from down in the lower state and he's attached to us in a way now that he gives those guys some some real uh 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 status you know he gives those guys you know some attention they they got you know somebody with them at all the time so we don't necessarily uh send those guys off on their own and let them kind of do their own thing that that most colleges do uh during the day so you know we really feel good about you know, what we've done. Gavin Zimmerman is returning. Gavin was really accurate last year. He's not quite, you know, we like his range to increase a little bit. He's getting bigger, too. He's he's, he's probably 150 pounds. And 150 bigger. pounds. Now. <laughs> get, yeah. He was 130-some pounds when we brought him in here, but he was a kicker, so you didn't necessarily need to be all that big. And then we've we've taken uh, uh, Max Cobb, a, uh, a, a punter kicker guy from Orlando, Florida. Uh, Dyson Roberts is the guy. He's out right now for a while. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we can, you know, do to get Dyson straight, you know, down the road a piece. But, you know, he's not with us now. But uh, Max Cobb will be our punter. And then uh, Caleb Brown just comes back as our long snap. We signed a long snapper, Justin Brunson, from over St. Matthews, who's going to be, a, 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 we think, not only a good snapper, but a great cover guy on punts. And uh, at that point, you know, that gives us a full – group of special teams guys. I had an opportunity, believe it or not, to talk to Caleb Brown. Oh, you special, really? special teams guys don't, don't used to get an interview. <laughs> yeah. Caleb Brown was very interesting from the standpoint of talking about his job and their role uh-huh. and, and working alone. And he's talked about Coach Collins coming in and how neat it is now to have someone to give them that 100% participation. Well, I, 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 yeah, I'm sure, you know, that gives them – a little different perspective on things to have a little different kind of organization that way. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this works out because this is really a neat little treat to have those guys, the, the expertise that we're being able to provide. On the offensive side, Coach, Corey Fields comes back, and that's more than a mouthful when you talk about a guy who's not only a good player, but just a good person and a good leader, almost like having another coach on the field in a sense. You're exactly right. Corey is uh, a six-year guy. Um, thought he might not come back because he's finishing up his master's. He's got all kinds of job opportunities out there, and uh, people are worrying him about coming to work in different places. But he wants to continue to play another year too. And, uh, you know, I think this might be it for him, but I can tell you what, this guy really has done a nice job of of being a mature guy who helps those young guys come along. He's bringing that quarterback group along with him. Um, I think that – that, that Andre Washington is 
is is really a, 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 a little different style kind of guy from him. He can do most of the quarterback run stuff a little bit better than Corey. He's that kind of guy. So that gives us a little bit of diversity in that position because not only do we have Corey back, but we're developing. He and then Prometheus is down there. Prometheus, by the end of the year, will probably be back to close to full speed. So, you know, what will happen is I think we'll try to continue to let Corey do 95% of it and then maybe use – those other guys a little bit from time to time and eventually we'll get those guys enough work well when Corey does leave that we won't necessarily be starting up from scratch. Uh, you're definitely not starting from scratch on the offensive line. Sean Goddard's mm -hmm. got an experienced group coming back. Mm -hmm. How do you take advantage of that group, Coach? Well, let's hope that we can run the football. And the two things we got in place that ought to give us that opportunity is an experienced offensive line and then we've got some good, uh, good young running backs. And you know, I don't know you know, if uh, if if we ought to be, uh, uh, I guess maybe we, we maybe ought to thank the Lord for having given us this <laughs> this little group of guys that we somehow managed to assemble for this team. But this might be one of the best group of running backs we've had since maybe the Baker and Will Ford days. Wow. When we had some top notch well, guys. Talking, you're talking royalty of running backs that's exactly out there. Exactly right. You're right. Javon Howell from Mooresville, North Carolina, we think is the real deal. And uh, he's a good player in a way where, you know, I think he gives us something special back there. He can he can be a home run. He had, somebody asked him, how fast are you? What's your part of time? He said, I don't know, but I ain't never been caught. <laughs> so they don't run him down. He ran, he ran through us a time or two, you know, so I can tell you that we didn't catch him when he got out on his own. So, you know, he's really going well that way. Uh, we got Casey Fields who we brought in, and he was kind of an afterthought kind of guy from down at Beaufort. And both these guys, man, are six foot, six one guys in the 210, 220 range. So they're bigger backs, you know, who got some real bite to them and some real lean to them. And then we bring back Tyler Smith, who who was a redshirt freshman last year, and Josh Shaw. Both those guys were, I'm telling you, Good football player. So we've got four running backs coming back. We actually took another Tyler Smith from Barnwell. We got two. And and show you how things work. Tyler Smith, who played for us as linebacker, right. is a sister strength coach at uh at Georgia Tech now. So he hits me yesterday. Tyler Smith on my phone. I say, what the heck is this? Which heck? <laughs> Who is this? I, so, so when I hit it back, I said, Tyler, I said, you wouldn't believe. I said, you are now the number one Tyler Smith. I said, but I got two and three here right now. <laughs> so it's a fun deal to be talking to those guys because it's always strange to have that many guys by the same name in your program. Coach, you got a new OC, Kevin McGurk, uh -huh. who I really shouldn't call him a new OC because he was here before, and he yep. did pretty well when he was here the last time. He did. And uh, – Kevin's the most organized of all of the OCs we've had since I've been here. And for some reason, you know, we didn't necessarily see eye to eye on something and I mess around and, and let him get away from us. Huh? Let's put it that way. And, you know, I've, I've longed for him from that point on. I know for a fact that, uh, that, that he would have been better for us in some ways than some of the other situations we've had. And uh, I was able to get him back here. So when I was looking for an OC, I talked to two or three of the guys who had been with our program over the years. And everybody said, is McGurk available? You know, that kind of deal. So I started talking to Kevin, and we got him back. And I'm excited. He's been fun to have here. You know, we mesh well. And, uh, you know, that's big in this deal because we spend so much time together until it's almost impossible to survive a, a relationship if you don't like each other, if you don't really get along. <laughs> and and I'm not the most likable guy sometimes, I can At tell times. you, especially especially when things aren't going well. So, you know, somebody asked me one time, say, how was it what, How was it working for Coach Lou Holtz? I told him, I said, well, I really don't know, I said, because I lost 11 games in a row with it, but I said, nobody is going to be fun <laughs> to work with when you're losing. So, you know, I can tell you that, you know, I'm looking forward to Coach McGirt. He's really got done a good job of getting in here and working with our quarterbacks and doing a good job of just making relationships, you know, within our team and, uh, and within our university. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing just how well we can do with him at the helm. Well, Coach, I'm not going to keep you. I appreciate your time. Best of luck. Good luck this weekend. Good luck next weekend in Atlanta. Thank you so much, Ernest. Look forward to you all being there. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Three people I talked to this week 
Tank Minner, Nick Tace, and South Carolina State receivers coach Paul Holmes. I simply could not get into this episode, but we will have them on in coming weeks. Stay tuned. There's another episode coming up as we talk with the Benedict College football players and Coach Chinnisberry about their upcoming season. Remember, we're on Facebook, X, and, of course, YouTube. I need you to go out there, like, comment, and share. On X, it's erob 87 Ernest. That's E-R-O-B-B-87 Ernest. On Facebook, it's by the name of the show, Sports Hotline, the podcast with Ernest Robinson. And on YouTube, it's Sports Hotline, the podcast, 87. Stay tuned for an upcoming episode. Tell a friend about it. Please like, comment, and share. And we'll see you next time.